Hi, this is Natalie Rice from here from sportsgreview.com. The Rugby World Cup kicks off on September 17th and runs through to August 31st. Here now to give us his predictions for the outright is BMR contributor and sports writer Richard Prue. Now, hosts New Zealand won the World Cup uh, back in 2011, and they are considerable favourites above England, priced 2.38 at Coral. Why do they have the shortest odds? Uh, put simply, they've been the best team in the world going back over a decade. That hasn't always meant that that's translated into winning the World Cup, although it did last time in 2011. But consistently over Southern Hemisphere championships and in one-off test matches, New Zealand are the strongest team going into this World Cup. Mm -hmm. And... By, by most people's reckoning, would be deserved favourites. OK. Well, the draw is out. Uh, who would you say the draw has been most favourable to? Well, it's a competition where the draw is made in advance. You can see each team's path through to the final, yeah. depending, on, depending on whether they win or finish second in their group. And the key thing is here that the two favourites are New Zealand and South Africa. But if both win their group, they would be seeded to meet in the semi-finals. Mm -hmm. So that creates an opportunity in the other half of the draw for the team that wins that half to reach the final without having to play New Zealand or South Africa. And that's not something necessarily that the betting markets take into account at this stage. So the teams that that would impact most favourably would be the hosts England mm -hmm. and Australia, who are in the same group. And the winner of that group wouldn't... Uh, have to meet New Zealand or South Africa until the final, and potentially the winner of the Ireland-France group as well. The same would apply to them. And theoretically, you can have um, the winners of France, Ireland, and the winners of England and Australia meeting in the semi-final, and one of them reaching the final. Uh, so the most favourable part of the draw is any part of the draw that doesn't feature New Zealand, quite, quite simply. Now, France and Australia, who finished second and third in the last World Cup, uh, how far of a run do you predict for both of those teams? Well, France is a difficult team because they're so inconsistent. They've got a lot of talent and a lot of flair, uh, but they don't usually perform up to those standards. Uh, they certainly haven't in any of the Six Nations competitions since the last World Cup. Uh, they are in a group with Ireland, and I think most people would expect them to finish runners-up in that group to Ireland, who are the reigning Six Nations champions in the Northern Hemisphere. If France do finish runner-up in that group, they run uh, into New Zealand in the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. And it would be a big ask, I think, for many people to suggest that they'll win that match. So the prediction for France would be at the moment the quarterfinals at the furthest. For Australia, that is an interesting question. Uh, they are in the group with England and Wales. Uh, and that is the toughest group to predict because those three teams are so evenly matched. If Australia win that group, and that's quite possible, uh, then I think they could go as far as the final uh, and then who knows, in a one-off match, anything can happen. But certainly Australia semi-final or final is a possibility if they win their group over England and Wales. Well, this year England are hosts. How important is that to their chances of winning? Well, it's important in, to host any of these major competitions. Uh, they obviously are in a home base. They have their support. They have less travel. And they're familiar with the conditions. Mm -hmm. England are certainly one of the four or five teams that can win this competition. They are third favourites to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but they still have to overcome the big southern hemisphere teams of New Zealand, South Africa and Australia to win the World Cup. Um, now, England have the strongest team that they've had for a few years but they're not the reigning Six Nations champions and they have plenty to prove. So being hosts is important, um, but, that, but they still need to perform on the field and you know, they would be underdogs certainly to New Zealand and South Africa if you expected um, to them to win the competition at the moment. And who should we consider as serious contenders for the title? Well, I think there are five uh, potential teams that can win uh, the tournament. It isn't a sport where you're going to get a lot of upsets and a lot of underdogs beating the favourite teams. If you are bigger, stronger and quicker mm -hmm. and better trained, you are going to beat the underdogs. 
Um, it's not like some other sports. And the New Zealand, South Africa would be the two favourites. Um, and then you would have a group of England, Ireland and Australia. And I think if the winner came from outside those five teams, then the bookmakers are going to have a very profitable World Cup indeed. All right. So go on. Do you have an early tip for us right now? Well, it goes back to the earlier point I, I made. You can back Australia at around 10 mm -hmm. at the moment. And if you took the view, I mean, that, that's compared to backing England at four, they are in the same group. And to me, it's roughly 50-50 which of those two teams wins on a given day and wins the group. Whoever wins that group can get to the final without meeting New Zealand or South Africa. And at 10, particularly uh, if you're backing for a place as well each way in the UK, uh, then Australia are the value play at the moment. But it really depends on whether they beat England or not as to whether you get a run for that money. OK, wonderful. Richard Prue, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you.